All right, dudes, world, everyone else, students in my classroom, I am back. So here we go. We are doing the next drawing. Uh, this will be the last drawing that you're looking at and really don't know what it is. Okay, this is, uh, it's like an old school drawing that we used to do a while back, but it's still good for what we want it to do. Um, it's called the linoleum. Uh, it's like, it's basically a linoleum flooring pattern. Okay, so if you ever go in somebody's house that still has like an old school floor, you might see this type of pattern on the floor. Um, we call it the 4-404 block though because it came from a, from a book that we started using maybe like a million years ago, okay? Um, but it's still a good drawing. So, on your screen here, what you're looking at is what it's gonna look like when we're done. It's something that is eight inches wide by five and a half inches tall. We have little blocks in the corner that are all two and five eighths by one and three eighths. And then the spacing between all of it is three eighths, okay? So, here's how we do it. And also we have very special dimensioning that we're going to talk about and that starts with this drawing. So here's how we go. We open up our title block, we make sure that we change this and uh, change the date, okay? Um, you're going to start doing offsets. So if the entire width is 8 inches, we want to know what half of that is, which is going to be anyone 4. Okay, nice job Jimmy. 4 to the left, 4 to the right. Uh, 8 is our width. That means that we go 4 left, 4 right because together that adds up to be 8. That's the right side, that's the left side. I no longer need this line. Offset again. If the height is 5.5, half of 5 is 2.5, so half of 5.5 is 2.75. You can use a calculator if you'd like, but it is 2.75 or 2 and 3 quarters. That's going to be your up and your down, and then we don't need this line. You want to make these into corners, okay? Um, I don't really like to use trim here because, as you can see, if I trim this, I'm left over with other stuff here. So that's a little bit of a pain. What I do like to do is use fillet, which is for rounding corners. But if you do a R, enter, which stands for radius, zero, that just means that it's going to come to a clean corner, okay? So we just click one, two. And then you can hit spacebar to get back in. One, two. Now another trick, spacebar. If you hit multiple, you know you're going to do a bunch of them. Then you don't have to hit spacebar and you just continue in that tool. So we now have what I call the box size, which is 8 inches wide by 5 and a half inches tall. If you're not sure about that, if you're doing that correctly, you should measure it real quick to make sure that you're actually getting it the right way. Okay. Um, so more offsets. We're going to do the little boxes in the corners first two and five eighths. Take a notice of how I type that number. The When I say and, that's the minus sign. Two and five eighths. Okay? And we use the little uh, right words tipping slash key between the five and eight. Okay? Two and five eighths. That's gonna be, so if you're looking at this drawing, two and five eighths is left to right, which means my offset's gonna be left to right. I have this and I need this. So I go two and five eighths, two and five eighths. Now hit escape, hit spacebar, we're back in offset again, and then we're going to do 1 and 3 eighths, because the height here, 1 and 3 eighths. This is an up and down measurement, so we go up and down with the offset, and we got to do 1 here and 1 here. Now you can see the four boxes in the corners, but you can see that we have a little bit extra, so you're going to go into trim, you're actually going to go into quick trim by hitting another enter, and then you're going to trim, trim. So now we're all set where we need to be, okay? Um, I'll show you two different ways to do this. The spacing of 3 eighths throughout the whole thing, you can do that with offsets. So if I go offset 3 eighths, by the way, that number goes this way and this way. Because if you go in, then you're not going to have 2 and 5 eighths by 1 and 3 eighths anymore, so it's out. But you'll notice that this is a little short. You can't use the extend tool because there's nothing to extend it to. And you can't use... Uh, the trim tool if you want or anything like that because it's too short so we could go like this and then we could extend or we could use the node like that and then we got a little trimming notice how you want to go a little bit too far rather than a little bit too short you can do it that way you can also do a fillet radius zero just like we did before or before you do the offsets if you take these two and you type join what that does is it makes a one polyline and now when you do the offset, 3 eighths, it's going to offset the entire thing. Okay? So, if you want, grab all these lines, 2, 4, 6, join. You'll see it makes three different polylines. 1, 2, 3. Offset, 3 eighths. 
3 8 on each one of those going towards the center of the drawing. Now we want to do uh, quick trim again. You're going to go into these spaces and open these up. There's eight all together. Again, this is what we're making. Click, click, click all the way around. And then you get this. Select it all. We're going to put visible lines on that, which we said in previous drawings is 0.7. And now we're going to talk about dimensioning. This drawing's done. Dimensioning is actually harder than the drawing in this actual, you know, in this one here. So you're going to go to DDIM. I think we did this in one of the beginning tutorials that you guys may have seen. If you skipped over that, maybe you want to go back. I think it was tutorial number five or something like that. Um, maybe four. We talked about dimensioning. Modify. Okay, you're going to hit and you're gonna uh, change exactly what I'm changing in here there are six things total under symbols and arrows make sure that arrow size says 1 over 8 center marks that's for like if we have circles it doesn't really apply to this drawing but for the future center marks will be set to none otherwise you get that or you get that if you're looking at this drawing here none text text is 1 over 8 that's the text height makes the text a little bit smaller makes everything fit a little bit better by the way, this was the arrow size, which is just how big the arrows are. It makes everything fit a little better. Fit. Always keep text between the extension lines. You'll notice that at times with the 3 8 or something small like that, it'll kick that number out and point to the area and say, hey, this is 3 8 But it, it ends up sitting on top of something else and it gets confusing. So we don't want that to happen. We want it to always keep text between the extension lines. Always stay between the two lines that we're measuring. Okay. Primary units. Fractional is good. You don't want to be on anything else. Later on, we'll be on architectural, but not yet. Fractional, 1 16th is already there. The last one you got to change, fraction format, make that say not stacked. All that means is that it's going to stack it this way, 13 sixteenths or whatever that is, 3 sixteenths, okay? And then hit OK and close. Now, when you do your dimensioning, this is very specific. It has to be exactly correct and exactly measured the right way. Otherwise, I will not accept it. This is for people that are in my classroom. Anybody else, you guys can dimension this however you want. Okay? Um, why do we dimension things? We dimension because, you know, in the future when we're making like real cool stuff, we want somebody to be able to read our drawing and understand exactly what size something is. If they struggle to understand the size of something, then they can't recreate it themselves. So as an example, if you're an architect and you're designing a house, if the guys that are on the ground and they're building this house don't understand your dimensions and they don't understand what size a specific room is or how big the bathroom is or anything like that, then they're not going to have a very fun time drawing and, I'm sorry, building that house. Okay, they're going to make mistakes and then everything is going to come crashing down. So don't do that. Okay, be good with your dimensions. So here you go. This is the way I do it. There's a million ways to do it. If you like a different way, that's fine. I do an offset of three eighths. And I go one up the top. Notice how we're putting dimensions on the top. The short ones go on the first line. The big ones go on the second line. Sometimes there are three lines, but we're not going to get to that for a while. Short ones on the first line, and then the big one on the second line. This is three-eighths to get to here, and then one-fourth to get to there. So that's why we're doing these offsets. Three-eighths. Pick another one over here. It doesn't matter which one. Three-eighths. Now, spacebar, spacebar. That brings you back in or escape spacebar or enter enter it's all the same thing one fourth one fourth further out one fourth further out that's the first line that's the second line you gotta get these lines there otherwise you don't it's not gonna work and it's not gonna look the right way okay everything's gotta line up perfectly now feel free to use dim linear like one two and then it wants to know where it goes and you click that one two click that one two click that but that takes too long, okay? So we're going to go a little faster here. We're going to do what's called QDIM, QDIM. I have no idea where that is up here. I've never found it before. If you find it, extra credit. Um, but just type it, QDIM, okay? The way this works is I can select a bunch of lines like this, and then I can hit Enter, and then it's going to dimension all the way between all of those lines. So in slow motion there, without doing that big selection, QDIM, I would do the end of this line, the end of this line, the end of this one, and this one, and this one. There's six all together. And then you hit enter. And now it wants to know where that line goes. Boom, we hit it at the first one. We need to get this line out of here. It's still back there. So do a little blue box like this right around it. If you miss the end, it won't go. If you do a green, it's going to grab the number two. You could also jump. There's like a little gap right here. You can see between the two and the line. 
You could try to put your cursor there and you might get it there. Um, you could also put your cursor on that line and you can do a, a line cycle, which is a shift space. And that gets you to the line that's behind there. Any one of those three or four things is perfectly fine with me. Okay? So we're going to do the same thing on the right side. Q dim. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't worry about the fact that it's also selecting these out here. It doesn't matter. It's only going to go, you know, it's going to pick up the up and down ones that are going up on, on the right side here. So enter goes on the first line. You're then going to do dim linear for the last one. One, two. Be careful. You don't want to accidentally select something else. One, two. Like here's a great example. I don't want to put that there. I want to put it there. Same thing over here. One, two goes on the second line. Don't just click it out here. We don't want that. We want to be on the line. And then watch. I can just do this. Big blue box around both. Delete. Big blue box around the whole thing. Delete. Now this drawing is almost done. I'm going to get rid of this one now. Last thing you got to do. This kind of looks like 82 or 28. Take this 8. Do not move it up or down because we just did that spacing for a reason. Move it over and then click. That way we know that that is specifically 8 and that is 2. Okay. Over here it's even more important. It looks like 25 and a half. No good. Move that straight up. Boom. Drawing is done. Zoom extents. Change your stuff if you didn't already. Save and then print it out. Nice job everybody. A round of applause. You guys killed it. I'll see you next time. Later.